Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Hanging Pillar There is a small village in India called Lipakshi, and it's home to a plethora of amazing and inexplicable examples of ancient technology. The village is less than 100 miles from the city of Bangalore. Within the village is a miraculous hanging pillar, the footprint of a goddess, and a group of mysterious stone circles. There is a massive impression stomped into the stone within the temple complex at Lepakshi. The footprint is roughly three and a half feet in length and was supposedly left by the goddess Sita. Then there is the unbelievable hanging pillar. It's the main attraction of the little village and an unexplainable piece of ancient technology. When India was first colonized by the British, engineers tried to dislodge the pillar from its place, but failed. Even these days, scientists don't understand how the pillar is fixed to the ceiling but doesn't physically touch the ground. It violates every law of gravity, hanging suspended above the stone floor so that you can sweep cloth and pieces of paper underneath it. These stone circles are half mystery and half ancient technology. Much like the goddess footprint, these circles are imprints left in the stone on the floor of the temple complex, but nobody's sure what they are. Each imprint consists of a main circle surrounded by 10 smaller circles, each one perfectly round. It looks as though they were made by some huge piece of machinery, but no one knows what they mean. Number 9. Leather Scale Armor An almost complete set of leather scale armor was discovered inside an ancient tomb in northwest China. Researchers from the University of Zurich believe the armor originated in the Neo-Assyrian Empire in the 6th century BC, then found its way to China. It was uncovered in the tomb of a horse-riding warrior near Turfan. This was a major technological advancement in the world of warfare. Scale armor was unique in that it protected the vital organs of the warrior wearing it. Scale armor was almost like having an extra layer of skin on durable yet malleable so that it didn't restrict mobility. The best scale armor was made through a meticulous process of patching together individual plates shaped like shields. These plates were arranged in horizontal rows, and it was a painstaking job. Because most armies were quite large in the ancient world, warriors didn't have access to such lavish forms of protection. Leather scale armor like this would not have been used by the common soldier. This particular set is extremely impressive. It was made around the year 786 BC from 5,444 small scales, each one stitched onto a solid backing. There were also 140 larger scales, altogether creating a waistcoat protecting the torso, hips, sides, and lower back. It would have been shrugged on like a coat. The big mystery is that scientists aren't sure if it was created by a Chinese warrior stolen from an Assyrian corpse, or worn by an Assyrian mercenary fighting in China for unknown reasons. Number 8. The Roman Road A Roman road from 2,000 years ago was recently discovered in England, in a small town in Worcestershire. Archaeologists say there is nothing else like it except for Pompeii and the city of Rome itself. Workmen digging in a field near an abandoned Roman settlement were the ones who came across its remains. The road is about 9 feet wide, made from large stones laid in the traditional Roman fashion to create a flat, drivable avenue. Local archaeologist Aidan Smith believes it's definitely a Roman road from the 1st century AD, which will make it the only one of its kind ever found in Britain. But 2,000 years ago, this road was only one piece of a much larger network connecting various Roman cities and towns. The technology was so advanced that the road remained hidden under several feet of dirt for thousands of years and is still almost in perfect condition. These stones were placed with expert precision, made specifically for wagons and convoys. People would have been able to walk these roads and feel relatively safe while journeying from one destination to the next. This was a major upgrade from having to travel along dirt paths through the woods and potentially be robbed. The old adage, every road leads to Rome, is because the Romans really did create the first superhighways. Their roads across Europe connected the continent in a way that had never been done before, allowing for easy travel and increased trade. But it's the durability of the roads that really speaks to their technological prowess. Most modern roads crack and break within a few years, 
but Roman roads last for centuries, with barely any damage. Number 7. The Balancing Rock Another ancient wonder in India is a thing called the Balancing Rock. It's located in Malinong and consists of two stones. One of these stones is a huge boulder, and it balances perfectly on the significantly smaller stone beneath it. According to local lore, the balancing rock has been in the exact same precarious position for centuries. No storm has ever been able to topple it. The stone itself is surrounded by bamboo plantations, and there are even rumors of creepy rituals. 1,000 years ago, the balancing rock was the preferred place for human sacrifices to appease local deities. The practice only fell out of favor when Christianity was introduced to the region. Unfortunately, we still don't know what's happening with the balancing rock. Most scientists agree it's most likely just a natural formation and a complete coincidence. Others think it's an example of advanced ancient technology. The rock looks like it should fall over at any second, but it never does. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number 6, but first, it's shoutout time! Big thank you to Chris Bodden and Candace Perry for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 6. The Solar Barge Around the year 2500 BC, a mysterious ship was sealed inside of a secret pit at the foot of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The ship was part of the extensive list of grave goods buried in and around the pyramid for Pharaoh Khufu to use in the afterlife. At 4,500 years old, the Khufu ship is one of the oldest sea vessels from the ancient world, hailed as a masterpiece of ancient woodcraft. It's 142 feet long, 19 feet wide in the middle, and is currently accepted as the oldest intact ship in the world. It was relocated to the Grand Egyptian Museum in 2021. It's in such perfect condition that if it were put into a body of water today, it would sail with no problem. It's still completely seaworthy. The exact function of the ship is still unknown. Archaeologists believe it was a solar barge, a kind of ritual vessel with a very specific purpose. It may be that the ancient Egyptians believed such a barge could carry the dead king across the heavens when he met the sun god Ra in the afterlife. But there is one thing that really throws a wrench into this theory. The solar barge shows obvious wear and tear, suggesting it had been used a lot before it was buried at the foot of the pyramid. It may have been instrumental in building the pyramid, perhaps used to transport blocks from quarries to the build site. Number 5. The Hipparchus Star Catalog Researchers affiliated with the University of Cambridge recently discovered fragments of an ancient manuscript about 2,100 years old. It's called the Hipparchus Star Catalog, authored by the brilliant Greek astronomer Hipparchus between 170 and 120 BC. The paper is the oldest known piece of evidence in which a human used numerical coordinates to try and pinpoint the exact position of a star. This was a major innovative breakthrough in the realm of astronomy. The text was unfortunately erased several centuries later so that the pages could be reused. Researchers only identified the fragments of text by using multispectral imaging technology. They had to look underneath the scribblings of ancient astronomer Claudius Ptolemy, who had written over Hipparchus's work 400 years later to make his own catalog. What's a little ironic about the situation is that Hipparchus' measurements were more accurate than the man who copied over his manuscript. Hipparchus successfully detailed the celestial longitudes and latitudes of almost 900 stars in the night sky. This wasn't exactly an ancient technology, but it was a huge leap forward in mathematics and star science. And it was all done by one man with a primitive telescope and an instinctive understanding of the cosmos. Number 4. Stonehenge Engineering Secrets Stonehenge was not built in a day. Archaeologists agree it took at least four main phases to complete the famous megalith located in the English countryside. Work began roughly 5,000 years ago, and the Neolithic builders finished their masterpiece 1,500 years later. That's hard to grasp in the modern mind, a single building project ongoing for over 15 centuries. And throughout it all, the ancient builders used primitive tools crafted out of stone and deer antler. 
But what was the secret to the longevity of Stonehenge? It's been standing erect for an extremely long time, seemingly impervious to the wear and tear of Mother Nature. Archaeologists believe the endurance of Stonehenge can be attributed to a clever ancient building technique. These stones were interlocked by using drilled holes and protruding pieces. Think of Lego. Each huge piece of stone either had holes for fitting the studs or it had studs for fitting into the holes. When these stones were put in position, they interlocked just like perfectly matching Lego pieces or Lincoln logs. Experts call it a mortise and tenon system, and it goes to show just how incredibly brilliant the builders of Stonehenge were. The smart idea is also the only thing keeping 17 of the original stones standing upright, with five of the capstones still in their original position from five millennia ago. Number 3. Roman Surgery In the year 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted with all the fury of the gods. The Roman city of Pompeii was buried under multiple layers of ash, preserving the city in stone as its residents and buildings were frozen solid. The Roman city of Herculaneum suffered the same fate. When archaeologists excavated these two petrified cities centuries later, they found artifacts from ancient Rome preserved as if they had been made yesterday. Some of these artifacts were surgical instruments, highly advanced medical tools recovered from a structure in Pompeii known as the House of the Surgeon. The collection of surgical tools taken from the house is now considered the best surviving example of surgery equipment from the 1st century AD. What's really shocking is that medicinal practices in ancient Rome were highly advanced. Some of the tools they used didn't change until late in the 20th century. Specifically, surgical tools used in gynecological operations were almost identical to the tools doctors are still using today. Then there are other, more bizarre surgical instruments. The bone forceps were used for removing pieces of the human skull during cranial surgery. The portal probe case was taken by surgeons to do house calls. The probe case contained all the necessary pokers and probes used by doctors to make diagnoses. Roman surgeons used obstetrical hooks for raising blood vessels and small pieces of tissue. They used epilation forceps for the removal of hair, and they had scalpels, surgical scissors, dozens of different probes, and lots of other stuff. They were almost better equipped than a lot of modern doctors. Number 2. The Stairway of Fountains About 550 years ago, the great Inca city of Machu Picchu looked a lot different than it does today. Along the steep ascending staircase moving through the ancient city to its peak, there are currently empty square chambers covered by short grass. But in the year 1450, when the city was powerful, these stone squares were part of an impressive engineering project. On either side of the stairway was a network of water fountains, 16 in total, which worked to supply fresh drinking water for the residents. The fountains also would have been quite the sight to behold. They were powered by what may have been the most advanced example of hydraulic engineering in South America. The incredibly genius Inca engineers built a permeable wall which worked to connect seeping water into a stone canal. The canal was also connected to a spring to help collect even more rainwater. Water was then pushed through Machu Picchu in a canal roughly 5 inches deep, carrying an estimated 80 gallons per minute. Charles Ortloff, a professional hydraulic engineer, says no other royal residences or Inca settlements boasted anything like it. The canal system was totally unique to Machu Picchu, passing through the outer wall, through agricultural zones, and into the residential zone. That was where the water flowed into the 16 fountains, each of which was publicly accessible. The cascade of water dropped a total vertical distance of 65 feet down to the last fountain, located within the Temple of the Condor. Number 1. The Wheel there has been no greater invention in human history than the wheel. Some could argue antibiotics, the telephone, the light bulb, but the wheel was truly one of the first great inventions and a major game changer. Nobody knows exactly when it happened, but archaeologists have a pretty good idea. Surprisingly, it was fairly late. People invented sewing needles and basket weaving, they built boats to sail across the ocean, humans played music from primitive bone flutes. And all the while, for thousands of years, nobody figured out how to make a wheel. The very first wheels weren't even used for transportation. 
around 3500 BC in Mesopotamia, wheels were first used for pottery. It took about three centuries before humans realized they could use them to make chariots, creating the world's first horse-powered vehicle. Wheels then revolutionized the globe. The best example comes in the form of the wheelbarrow. Around the 6th century BC in classical Greece, someone realized they could put a wheel on a bucket and save themselves a lot of time moving material. Wheelbarrows were incredibly expensive to purchase, but paid for themselves within a week. Being able to move a full load in a bucket attached to a wheel saved an unprecedented amount of time. The wheelbarrow was likely one of the first major technological advances that cost laborers their jobs. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!